know. Well, it's good to be in service this morning with everyone. Praise the Lord. What a gorgeous day the Lord has given us. Amen? Yes. Amen. Good to see you out today on this beautiful day. We want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer today. We are uh, still in a, uh, in a need of God's intervention in our country, in our land, for people who are uh, not uh, handling all the change well. But uh, we know that God is our answer. He's our refuge and shelter in time of storm. And so uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer today and ask God's help. And I just encourage you this morning. I know that um, it may be uh, a little different, but please enter into worship today. Put your heart and your mind here. Uh, praise the Lord. Worship the Lord. Put your heart on what we got, what we got going on here because God is worthy to be praised. Amen. He is still doing marvelous things in the middle of all the chaos. And so let's uh, put our hearts to it. Let's pray together to this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the privilege we have to call on you. We're so grateful, God, that uh, we are assured that you care for what we are going through. Your touch with the feelings of our infirmities. And Lord, today we lift our hearts and we lift our hands. We lift us our, our needs before you this morning with thanksgiving. And we ask that you would intervene for all those who have lost jobs, for all those who have uh, experienced illness, for all the rioting and the chaos that's going on around our land. Lord, we intervene today. Would you please be merciful to our country? Would you please be merciful to our neighborhoods and our communities? God, and I pray, Lord, for Souls Harbor today specifically. Lord, that you would let our light so shine that people may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We love you today. We're appreciative of you. And we just give you praise this morning. Oh, Lord, do not let the rocks cry out. Help us to lift our voices in praise and worship to you today. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for your continued help. And we give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Brother Steve's going to lead us in some singing. And I encourage you to sing along. Let's worship the Lord today. by faith this morning. Do you know the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. Amen. He said in another place uh, I can do all things. Paul said I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But if you don't have faith you can't. You cannot please the Lord. Amen. You can't live an overcoming life. So let's sing living by faith. <laughs> Today, what tomorrow may bring, the shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith. Living by faith 
safely will carry me through, no matter what evils be done. Why should I then care though the tempest may blow, if Jesus walks close to my side? Living by faith. is staying strong. Amen. And I, as I uh, shared with you Wednesday night, faith is for the living. The just shall live by faith. And uh, faith is not just for the having. Faith is not for the possessing. But faith is for the living. And uh, we live by faith. Amen. We want to come to you this morning for the tithing offering. Give you an opportunity to give to the Lord's work. And um, we'll sing another song while we do that. But if our ushers would come. Amen. Come ahead, Braden. Amen. I trust and pray that you have seen the provision of the Lord through all of this uh, craziness. That you have witnessed God being faithful to you. And I know that you are appreciative if that's then the case. And so we give today with a cheerful heart. Let's pray. Lord, we're thankful today that, as David said, I was young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor God's seed begging bread. Lord, you have provided our every need. Not always what we wanted. But our needs have been met, and we are grateful today. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen.
pray that you've experienced the blessings of the Lord as you have given to Him. Amen. Uh, I have just a couple of quick things that I want to address you about this morning before we uh, turn the service over to Brother Thomas for the preaching. Uh, immediately following the service, uh, everyone who is willing to help with the Trucker's Day, I would like to uh, have you just get out of your cars and we can gather up here. I need to talk to you for just a, a couple of minutes about some logistical things. Uh, but I want to encourage all of you, please be here for next week, Trucker's Day. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, we're going to have a big old tent set up right here. We're going to have food. Uh, we're going to have, hopefully, this whole field filled with really nice big rigs and uh, truckers. And uh, I just ask that you would please be in prayer this week that the Lord would draw people to himself and we're not doing this just so that we can have a big day we're doing this because we want the Spirit of the Lord to bring people to Calvary and to get saved and so I encourage all of you to please join with me in prayer this week make it a matter of priority to pray that God would uh, draw people to himself this next week but uh, if you're willing to help with the setup and and uh, being a part of making this happen, uh, immediately following the service, if you would please come and, and we'll just gather up here for just a moment and I'll just share with you a little bit of uh, what we got going on. There's some logistical challenges we need to address of how we're going to park and various things, so just be a part of that. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm excited about this. We're going to have ourselves a wonderful, wonderful week. Oh, and by the way, did y'all notice our new sidewalk here? I trust and pray that you saw that coming in. Uh, the sidewalk has gotten fixed this week and for all those of you who came and helped yesterday at work day uh, raking uh, out the pine needles cutting the bushes picking weeds uh, 
fixing fences and all the things that got accomplished. Thank you so much for that. The church, church ground looks better, and we thank you for your help in that regard. We appreciate you very much. Without any further ado, we're going to turn the service over to Brother Thomas, and he's going to come and minister the Word of God for us. And uh, just open your spirit and let the Lord speak to you today through the preaching. Amen. I'm on. Praise, praise the Lord. I got a little squeal going by there. <clears throat> I want to say good morning to everybody this morning. We're glad you're here with us. And uh, Sister Tracy, do you have a song? Where is Sister Tracy at? She's in the building. Well, I just thought I'd better check with her and see if she'd come prepared today. Oh. Uh, what did uh, Winston Churchill, what uh, part did he play? Was he the uh, of what of England? Prime Minister? Was he Prime Minister of England? Uh, I was listening, listening uh, this past week, and they was talking about uh, Winston Churchill. He had a drinking problem. He'd, he was, uh, he'd, he'd drink, you know, and get, get tipsy and that sort of thing, and he was pretty... He was pretty uh, sharp with his uh, talking, telling things. Uh, one day he was uh, pretty intoxicated, and this woman, uh, this woman told him, said, Winston, you're drunk. He looked at her, he said, and you're ugly. And he said, besides that, I'll be sober in the morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, there's one thing about it. I can't tell if you like it or you don't like it. Oh, uh, I was, uh, I don't even know how many years, maybe 40 years ago, I was in a service in Hammond, Indiana, and uh, there was a, a preacher by the name of Lester Roloff, and I, I don't remember anything about the message, but I remember... Uh, the title that he that he had and they titled it have you lost your paw and uh the lord just dealt with me this week that uh that's what he wanted preached uh last night i i got it went in my office and i was trying to bypass it you know just i, I was trying to go another direction and and the lord just impressed on me that that's this is what he won't talk want me to talk about this morning uh, have you lost your paw? And uh, in Job, if you want to get your Bible and look on, in Job chapter 39, I want to read a, a scripture to you here. Uh, in chapter 39, in verse starting with verse 19, uh, Job 39 and 19 says, Has thou given the horse strength? Has thy clothed his neck with thunder? Canest thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostril is terrible. He paweth in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear and is not affrighted. Neither turneth he back from the sword. And would you just bow your heads and uh, I'm going to ask Brother Wells, I know he's down at the far end of the, the parking lot here, but I'm going to ask him to pray, and I just ask you to join him as he asks God to anoint this vessel of clay this morning. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Wells. And uh, we trust that God will do something special in this 
this time that we have together today. Uh, let me point out here in verse 20, it talks about, Canest thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? And he's talking about the horse. And if you wasn't raised on a farm, you probably don't know all about what I'm fixing to tell you, but uh, uh, I've seen the horse and the mule out in the, in the pasture, and they get, sometimes they get very bold. And uh, it said the glory of his nostril is terrible. I've, I've heard them snort, you know, and, and, and what they're doing, they're, they're saying, hey, I'm not afraid. And, and they'd take their foot and they begin to paw in the dirt. Uh, and they're showing that they're not afraid. And I just thought, boy, this fits us for today. Have you lost your paw? Have you lost uh, the, the courage that you're supposed to have as a Christian? And uh, uh, I, <clears throat> I would just say, Christian friend, we don't need to lose our paw. Uh, we're living in some dark times, and we must become salt and light in this day that we're living in. Uh, what's, hap what, what's happened in our world today is uh, uh, they, it's shocking. Every time you turn the news on, it's shocking what shows up on the next round of news. Uh, this, this thing with uh, George Floyd, uh, them killing him and and uh, you, can, you can communicate with us by, by tooting your horn an amen if you agree with what I'm preaching today. But uh, I just thought uh, this is a terrible thing that has happened here in America with uh, the killing of this, this uh, black man in Minneapolis. Uh, and it, uh, to watch that video, it was a terrible thing. And uh, you could say amen to that. Uh, it's, it's definitely a terrible thing that's happened. Uh, there's not, uh, I, I just say to you, there's not, uh, in my thinking, there's not such a thing as African American and uh, Indian American and Spanish American. Uh, we're either Americans or we're not. Amen? Yes. Amen. We. We are Americans. You cut any of us and we'll bleed red. Amen. We need to be aware that that's a part of our lives. And, and there's a time that we're living in that the Christian needs to stand up and be counted. I mean, it's, this is the day for us to stand up and be counted. And uh, the Lord wants us to be aware that we uh, take that responsibility uh, we're living in a time of lawless, lawlessness. Uh, what's going on with the, 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 the it's protesting. They, uh, this needs to be protested as far as what went on there. Uh, we've got good police officers, but to have one or two that is bad and they're sour, uh, it doesn't sour all of them. Uh, I'm thankful for our, for our police. I'm thankful for that they're still government that we have today but uh, we can't let this one one or two bad situations be to where it uh, riles us up to where we get out and go to burning and tearing up people's property and doing damage and this is wrong amen this is wrong and the world needs to know that we stand against all of this uh, looting and, and destructive uh, work that's been going on. We stand against that. And I'm telling you this because it's time for the Christian to stand up and be counted. It's time for us to come out from the shadows and be to where we have a voice to say it's wrong. The things that's going on in America is wrong today. And uh, we need to take a stand against it. And that's what I'm preaching to you about today, that uh, you need to be to where you hadn't lost your Paul, that you hadn't gone into the shadows. First of all, I want to tell you, in taking a stand for God and for stand for right, is that you need to vote. You need to get involved. These, uh, these uh, politicians that... Uh, and and I, I say this to that mayor and that gover governor of that state where this took place. Uh, Hillary Clinton made a statement. She said, 
Never let a good crisis go to waste. In other words, take advantage of it and make hay out of it. But uh, I, I just thought about this, this, uh, this mayor. If he would have taken action, or she would have taken action, I don't know whether it's a he or a she. I know, I know it has a spirit. Well, I better be careful here. I don't want to offend the ladies. But uh, it's got the wrong spirit there. When they backed up and they didn't, they didn't police that situation and stop it in the bud, it's turned into burning the city. And this is wrong. This is uh, something that the Christian should stand up and say, there's a difference between right and wrong. There's a difference in, in how we treat. And hey, I'll just tell you, I mentioned to you that uh, there's, in my thinking, there's not, uh, it's not white Americans and black Americans and African American. Uh, I've got a brother over here, Brother Wells is black, and uh, that, that we bleed the same. Our blood is red when you cut our finger or something. He's a brother in Christ and I love him with all my heart. And uh, you can't let uh, prejudice enter in. If you, have, if you have a spirit of prejudice in your life, you need to ask God to forgive you and get it out. Because it's wrong. God needs the church to stand together. He needs Christians to stand up and be counted. He meant for us to be the salt of the earth. First of all, we need to vote. You need to vote out those people that are doing wrong. And let me just say to you, Republican or Democrat, when they decide that uh, marrying men marrying men and women marrying women and killing babies, when they decide that, I mean, today I know the Democrats stand in favor of this and if the republicans go to stand in favor of it i'll be just as against them but i'm telling you it's time for the christian and the church to stand up and be counted it's time for us to take a stand there was a survey of voting habits in the area of chicago some two decades ago it said 99 percent of the tavern keepers that's people that run the bars and that sort of thing 99% of them voted. They went to the polls and voted. 97.5% of the gamblers and, and the employees at the gambling casinos went and they voted. And six, only 16% of the housewives voted. Only 17% of the Protestant ministers voted. 29% of the Pro Protestant laymen voted. I'm talking about the church had gone to sleep and it needs to be waken up in this day that we're living in. Oh, have you lost your Paul? Have you lost that Paul that you used to have? That you stood up for God, you stood up for right, you had a voice. Jesus wants us to become salt and light. And that's what I'm preaching about this morning. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 and 14, He said, Ye are the salt of the earth. And then He goes on and says, Ye are the light of the world. God wants His people, I'm talking about the Christian, to become the salt of the earth and the light of the world. The fullness of that uh, Scripture there in verse 13 says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Now, my mother, uh, years, years ago, I was just a, a little boy, but uh, my mother, uh, we can because we didn't have electricity and we didn't have a, a deep freeze or anything, and, and uh, my mother would can beans and, and she'd held the top off of those beans. But the last thing she did, she'd t unscrew the top because it hadn't been tightened as she boiled it in a, 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 a preserving cooker thing. But she'd take the top loose and she'd put a pinch of salt in there. Now that salt was not uh, a form of seasoning those beans to make them taste good. That salt was put in there as a killer of the germs that was in that, that jar. And hey, salt kills the germs of sin. The salt of a Christian kills the, 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 the sinfulness. It, 
It, and hey, I'm just telling you, you don't need to lose your Paul. You need to be where you take a stand. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And hey, listen, you need to get more dedicated to God than you've ever been. If there's ever a day that you need to stand up and take a stand for God, it's in this day we're living in. We need to be counted today. And I just, I just tell you, uh, you need to do that. Uh, <clears throat> we need to become the salt and the light of the world. He said, and let you good that they may see you good works. We ought to have some good works in our lives. Uh, he's, what he was saying here in these two scriptures, uh, it becomes light. This is what it must, must become in order for, uh, and he, he gives us the criteria of this through the Beatitudes here, verse 12 through, uh, verse 3 through verse 12. Uh, it'll show us what the salt and the light must be. First of all, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and hey, he's not, what he's talking about there, you need to get control of your spirit. Be to where you don't flare up. I'm talking about Christians. Uh, a Christian that flares up and loses his temper, he's lost his testimony. We need to be to where we control our spirit is what he's talking about. And then he goes on to say, Blessed are they that mourn, for they should be comforted. Uh, and mourning here, uh, I, I was reading some on church history, and it tells about the uh, and Anchorites. I don't know whether you've ever heard of them or not, but uh, in the, around the four, four, 400 uh, A.D., it talked about them and what they did. They tried to separate themselves uh, from the world and uh, even to become more like animals. Uh, some of them would actually go out and they eat grass, and they were referred to as shepherds because. Uh, and, and what they were doing, they were trying to uh, be separated from the world. The Bible tells us, "Love not the world, neither the things that's in the world." If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you need to be where you control your heart, that your heart is set on God, and you do have to set apart some things. But these people took it a, a step further. <coughs> but the, the uh, this I, I was reading, I brought this quote out of what the what I was reading said. But the the greater the corruption of society, the more need for holy men and women to live in that society. We need to live in that society that, uh, that we are exposed to this world, that uh, this world can see that there's still some godly people. There's still people that love God, that take a stand against sin, and, 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 and truly there may be some persecution that comes with it. He goes on in the Beatitudes, he said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And when you talk about meekness, you're not talking about weakness. That doesn't mean that people's weak just because that uh, he mentions me, being meek here. Moses, uh, in Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. But hey, listen, Moses was not a weak man. You remember when he came down off the mount? Uh, there and had the Ten Commandments in his arms and he saw that they had stopped uh, waiting on God and, and they had started worshiping a golden calf. He just threw them down and they broke and he gr made them grind up those, that golden calf and drink it. That don't sound like meekness to me. Hey, I'm just telling you the Christian needs to have a backbone. We need to be to where we start standing up, speaking out. Hey, Amen. If if today all the people that claim to be Christians were speaking out, our, our nation wouldn't be in the mess that it's in. It wouldn't be going down the road that it's going down today if people of God would stand up and have a backbone. You don't have to be the word that you aggravate people. You can still take a stand for what's right. 
He goes on in verse 6, says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hey, listen, you need to have, well, let's talk about the hunger and thirst for just a minute. Uh, what are you hungry for? What are you thirsting for? What, what gets you? Is it the appetite that you have, the physical appetite that you can get back into the restaurants and have a steak or, or have something that you delight in? Or is your appetite turned toward God? Hey, if it's not turned toward God, you need to turn it that way this morning. You need to be the one that you turn your appetite toward God. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Having the due rights of God. That's what righteousness is. It's when God puts it in your heart that you just want to do what's right. Praise God, we need to stand up for right today. There needs to be a hunger for right in the heart and the life of the Christian today. <clears throat> First of all, you, you and I must have the right appetites. Hey, we're starting church. We're having church out here today. Next week, we're going to have a big tent stretched across here. We're going to have Truckers Day. It's going to be a wonderful time. We're going to have Brother Charles is going to barbecue a, a whole pig if we can run him down and catch him in time. But we're going to have a barbecue. Uh, we're going to have a, a great day here. But uh, next Wednesday night before next Sunday, we have in church in the gym on Wednesday night. We're having church in the gym on Friday night. We're going to have church the following Sunday after Trucker's Day in the gym. We're going to be in the gym. You'll be to where you can sort of spread out if you have a fear or, or, or and, and I, I shouldn't say fear. I should say if, if it bothers you to be close to folks, you can sort of spread out. We've got plenty of room. But uh, hey, there ought to be an appetite in our hearts to get back in, in fellowship with God's people. There ought to be such a hunger that we want to get back. And I just thought about I'd just love to hug your necks this morning and say I love you, I care about you, because that's what it's about. You can tell if you pass from death unto life because you love the brethren. There's a genuine love in your heart for the men and women of God. Hey, listen, we need to hunger and thirst after righteousness that we may be filled. And I just thought about what are you going to be filled with? We need to be filled with holiness. The Bible said, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. There ought to be a hunger in the hearts of God. Hey, have you lost your paw? Have you lost it? You've stopped pawing in the, in, the, in the valley. It should be a hunger for holiness in our hearts and our lives. I know it's a, not a popular word. A lot of people don't want to even be around folks that mention it, but hey, you're going to mention it if you go to heaven because only people that have holiness are going to make heaven their home. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. There should be a hunger to be filled with the holiness of God. Hallelujah. And then secondly, we should be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, let me encourage you today to say, God, fill me. Fill me, Lord. There's a hunger in my soul to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you have the Holy Ghost, it ought to be that there's a hunger in you for Him to be active in your life. Not put on hold or, or back up in the shadow, but Him be alive. Hallelujah in our lives. It should be that we're not ashamed for Him to take over any time He wants to. And Him be the Lord. Him be the One that rules and reigns. Hallelujah. Uh, and you need to remember, He only dwells in a clean vessel. He doesn't, he doesn't dwell in a, uh, an unclean vessel. So if you've got things going on in your life that you need to ask God to forgive you for, I preached Friday night on uh, that prodigal son, the older one, that he had everything at his disposal all the time. He, wasn't, uh, uh, he, he, he didn't want to join the party because uh, he, he thought the younger son was being treated better. But hey, listen, the father told him, said, you had all this. Everything I had was at your hand. Hey, listen, you've got things at your disposal today and the Holy Ghost is one of them. Hallelujah! 
the last thing that Jesus told us before He ascended to heaven, He said for us to tarry. He told the disciples that tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Hey, He said you need the Holy Ghost. There ought to be a hunger in the hearts of God's people today. God, fill me with Your Spirit. Fill me to overflow with Your Spirit and Your power. Amen. That's, that's a horn. <clears throat> Have you lost your Paul? And then thirdly, fill me with a fresh desire to know Him. We need to be, there ought to be something in us saying, God, I want to get to know You. I want to get to know You better, Jesus. I want to know what You felt. I want to know what You thought. I, I want to know You better. Because it'd be terrible for you to get to heaven if you make it and say, man, I don't, I don't know nothing about what's going on up here. Let's get to know Him. There ought to be a hunger in God's people to get to know Him. Paul said in uh, the 10th verse of Philippians 3, he said that I might know Him. That I might know Him. He said, that's my desire. That's what I'm wanting. That's what I'm hungry for. That I might know Him. Have you lost your Paul? Have you lost your Paul? Hey, let's get it back today. Let's get our Paul back pawing in the, in the valley. He goes on, and I'll not take a lot of time on these. He says, Blessed the mer mer merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed the pure in heart, for they shall see God. All of this is pointing toward us being salt and light. That's what this is talking about. Blessed are they which do, uh, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Don't, don't, be, don't be guilty of doing something that you get persecuted for. Hey, when you stand for God, if you're persecuted for that, Hey, rejoice in it. Be happy about it. That you took a stand for God in this day we're living in. Said to rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Have you lost your Paul? Have you lost your Paul? Let's get it back. Hey, it's time. God's calling today for His people to take a stand. He's calling for His people today to come out of the shadows and have a voice that we stand up for Him, that we witness to others, we talk about others, talk to others about Jesus. God is needing His people to take a stand today. I was reading this story by James Dotson. I want to relate this to you. I, 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 let me try to read it. I don't know. James Dawson related a story of an elderly woman named Stella Thornhope who was struggling with her first Christmas alone. Her husband had died just a few months prior of a slow developing cancer. Now several days before Christmas, she was all, almost snowed in by a brutal weather system. She felt terribly alone. So much so, she decided she was not going to decorate for Christmas. Later that afternoon, the doorbell rang, and there was a delivery boy with a box. He said, Miss Thor Thornhope, she nodded. He said, well, would you sign here? She invited him to step inside and close the door to get out from the cold. She signed the papers and said, uh, what's in the box? The young man laughed and opened the flap. Inside was a little puppy, a golden Labrador retriever. The delivery boy picked up the squirming pup and explained, this is for you, ma'am. He's six weeks old, completely housebroken. The young puppy began to wiggle in happiness of being released from captivity. Who, uh, who sent this, Miss Thornhope asked. The young man set the animal down and handed her an envelope and said, It's all explained in this envelope, ma'am. The dog was bought last July while its mother was still pregnant. 
It was meant to be a Christmas gift for you. The young man then handed her a book on how to care for the Labrador Retriever. In desperation, she asked again, Who sent me this puppy? As the young man turned to leave, he said, Your husband. Your husband did, ma'am. Merry Christmas. She opened up the letter from her husband. He had written it three weeks before he died and left it with a kennel owner to deliver with the puppy as his last Christmas gift to her. The letter was full of love and encouragement and admonition to be strong. He vowed that he was waiting for her for the day when she would join him. He had, he had sent her this young animal to keep her company until then. She wiped away the tears, put the letter down, and then remembered the puppy at her feet. She picked it up, the gold, golden furry ball, and held it to her neck. Then she looked out the window at the light that outlined the neighborhood's house, and she heard from the radio in the kitchen the, the, the a sound coming, said, singing, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Suddenly Stella felt the most amazing sensation of peace washed over her. Her heart felt a, a joy and a wonder of great that the grief and the of a, over the grief and the loneliness. Little fellow, she said to the dog, It's just you and me, but you know what? There's a box down in the basement I bet you'd like. It's got a little Christmas tree in it and some decoration and some lights that are going to impress you. And there's a manger scene down there. Let's go get it. God has a way of sending a signal of light to remind us life is stronger than death. Light is more powerful than darkness. God is more powerful than Satan. Good will overcome evil. And there was one verse of Scripture said, The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. I just say to all of us, it's time for us to pick up our pawing in the valley. Amen. It's time for us to be counted. It's time for you to make a renewal prayer to God and say, Lord, you can count on me. I'll be a soldier of the cross from this day forward. Would you bow your heads with me right now? Father, thank you. Thank you for your anointing, God, for your power this morning. And Lord, I pray for everyone that has listened today, whether it was by Facebook or YouTube, or God, these people that are sitting in the parking lot and tooting their horns as an amen. God, I pray today that you would touch our hearts and give us strength, Lord, to be counted as a soldier of the cross, to have a voice in this day, and to begin pawing in the valley again, God, and making a difference in this world that we're living in. Lord, if there's one here that's not saved, or if there's one God that's listening on Facebook that's not saved, I ask God that you would help them to pray this prayer right now. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Master. I give you my life today, God, and I trust you to be my Savior. Lord, I, I know if they prayed that prayer that you forgave them. And God, they've got a new lease on life effective today because all their sins were washed away. Because you said if we'd confess our sins that you was faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, I know that you're good as your word that you've done that. And Lord, I pray today for these that are parked here on our parking lot. God, would you help all of us today and these on the platform. God, would you help us today that we become more effective spreading the gospel, witnessing to people, and helping to turn people from the way that they're going 
unto the ways of holiness and godliness and making heaven their home. Would you bless each one, Lord, that's listened today, and we give you praise and glory and honor, and all of God's people say amen. Amen, amen. Lord bless you. Now I'll turn it over to Brother Gary. Don't forget, don't forget Trucker's Day next week. Invite some people to come. I'm going to have to leave a little early. Got another service to go to. Brother Gary.
Amen. I can't get enough of His grace. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you today for coming to the house of the Lord and worshiping with us. And I tell you, I don't want to lose my Paul, do you? I still want to have some fight in me. I still want to have a, a willingness to go to battle. And uh, I don't want to be running from the battle. I want to be running to it. Amen. I want to be a good soldier. Let's pray this morning that the Lord would keep His hand upon all of you and let you have a great week and be victorious in Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank You today for what You've done in all of our hearts and lives. We thank You, Lord, for giving us a desire for these things that Brother Thomas talked to us about, about holiness and righteousness and uh, all of the things that Christians should desire and want. And Lord, sometimes our appetites grow dim for those things, but I pray today that you would give us a renewed and revived uh, hunger for what, we, what it is we should desire. Go with all my brothers and sisters this week. Help them to have a great week. Be victorious in you. Keep their faith strong, their commitment to you strong. Lord, I pray that you would watch over all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.